All right, so today we're talking about prayer, and as we talk about prayer, <laughs> I'm talking about why is my prayer not working? I don't know if you've ever prayed before, and you've had the point in your life like, this thing is not working. And the reason why I spoke about that is because it's my personal experience. I've been frustrated. I have been frustrated. Like, I prayed and prayed and prayed. I remember in the second service, I was just making some decrees that as this fast is over, there are some things that must happen this week. I was just making some decrees. But there are a lot of things I've learned from the Bible, why prayers are not answered, and what you can do to change it. So that's what we're talking about today. So let's turn our Bibles to, um, to Matthew chapter 15. I, I kind of dealt about this last week, and I will just lean into it more. Matthew 15 verse 21. And Jesus went there thence and depended to the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, the son of David. My daughter is grievously, is grievously vexed with the devil. Take note of the prayer. Have mercy on me, O son of David. He said unto, he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cried after us. And he answered and said, I'm not sent unto the lost sheep. I'm not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The Bible says, when he said that, he said something to discour discouraging, the woman changed her prayer, and he came and began to worship. Once you understand prayer, you understand that there are dimensions to prayer. So if I'm praying about something in a frequency, if I'm not getting the kind of response I want, I can change the frequency and move somewhere else. This woman all of a sudden changed and said, okay, let's move into worship. Let's move into worship. You must ask yourself, why did she say, have mercy on me? The reason why she said, have mercy on me is that she understood that Jesus Christ was primarily sent during his earthly ministry to the Jews. But outside, when he rose from the dead, he had pulled in the Gentiles. So she knows that being a non-Jew, she might not be entitled to a miracle. So she says this, what does she say? She says, have mercy on me. I don't deserve it, have mercy on me. And Jesus Christ says, I'm sorry, I'm sent to the lost out of the house of Israel. And he says, okay, if that's what it is, let's begin to worship. A prayer will not work, let's begin to worship. A prayer will not work, let's begin to worship. And that's why on Tuesday, we're going to worship. On Tuesday, NLP, we're going to, Tuesday, Wednesday, we're going to worship. Let's begin to worship. Someone say hallelujah. Yeah? The Bible says this, and let me say something to you. If you have done everything about prayer, just go into Thanksgiving. I'm telling you what I do. Once I don't know what to pray about again. Because I don't know what to say again. Before I use my other prayer to cancel the other prayer. Because you can pray and miss the way. You can never praise and miss the way. Oh, yeah. You can pray and your prayer becomes nonsense. But there's no way your offering of thanksgiving done in the right way can miss the way. Are you here? Yes, so the Bible says this. I want to take note of what the Bible is saying. So the Bible says this. Then, G, um, then Jesus, all of a sudden she worshipped. Then she, Jesus said it's not, right to, it's not right to take the children's bread and cast the dogs. Really saying that you're not in this equation. And she said, true Lord. Yet the dog eats of the crumbs that fall from the table. Bible says, Jesus Christ said unto her in verse 28 and says, O woman, great is your faith. What I wanted you to see was how she went from dimension in prayer to dimension in prayer and how she was consistent. In this generation, some will conclude maybe God does not exist. Maybe God is not kind to me. Maybe God is not faithful. But how she was persistent. So the first question I want to answer today is this. This is the first question I want to answer. Why do we have to pray? Why do we have to pray? Why do we have to pray. Why do we have to pray? Let, let me see if I can get someone to just come on the stage. Um, um, Pastor Femi, George, will you come on the stage? Get a microphone, come on the stage. Come on the stage. So, we're going to have a conversation. So, Pastor Femi, George has this beautiful apartment in Ikoi, you know, which I've rented from him. So, take note of the, of, of the scenario. He has, I want to come close to me, you know. It's okay. It's okay now. You want to come closer? Okay, that's fine. I'm just joking. <laughs> so, Pastor George, has this wonderful apartment in Ikoi. It's a three-bedroom flat, and I'm living inside. You know, and the, the pipe broke. The pipe broke. The toilet bottle was something that was structural. You know, who will get to fix that? Is it me, the tenant, or the landlord? Me. What? The landlord. It will be the landlord right now. Okay, so I put a call to you and say, Sir, the apartment has structural problem. We need to fix it. And you say, okay, that's fine. You will fix it. 
when you're going to fix it, will you just send in the plumber with the extra key of your house that you have? Or you will tell me, what will you do? No, I'll call you first and I'll ask when I can come in and do it. Oh, but, but it's your house. Why do you have to call me? Because you're the one that has the legal right to it. Oh, because I have the legal right to it. That's what prayer is. The, what is prayer? Prayer is that I want God to fix things in my life, but I need to invite him to come inside. That's why we pray. Because, because if, you, if I just come into my house and I see you fixing the plumbing work, what will I say? I can arrest you, right? Yes, you can. I, I can arrest you because I can be like, Mr. Landlord, you can't just come into my house because a pipe is broken. You don't know if my wife is naked. You don't know what is happening. You don't know if I kept the million dollars here that I'll be so upset. People say, when God knows what I'm thinking, when he knows my needs, why do I have to pray? Because although God knows your need, knows everything, before he can step into your life, he needs to make sure you give him invitation or permission. Prayer is permission for God to interrupt our lives. That's what prayer is. We are inviting God and say, God, come and do what you have to do. Thank you, sir. That's what prayer is. Because many people... This generation says, it's, it's meaningless. Why do I have to pray when God knows what I'm thinking? Why do I have to pray when God knows my need? See, let me tell you, if God keeps invading your life that way, I'm sure you're going to sue God one day. Because you think he will just bless you. There are many things that God will force on you that you're not like. So God says, because you have human will, I respect it. Anytime you want me, invite me. How do you invite me? Ask in prayer. Ask in prayer. Glory to God. So, so we, we now understand why prayer is important. But the second thing is I want to ask ourselves. So we teach about how to pray. So why can't I just pray anyhow? You can't pray anyhow because prayer has procedures. Do you know that in the bank, um, wait, wait, is Inka here? Okay. So do you know in the bank, you know, just hold on, sir. Do, do you know in the bank? Just hold on, just make sure. Have you been able to write? Okay, thank you. So do, do you know in the bank, when you have money in the bank, you just can't show up in the bank and say, hey, bank, I have money here, give me money. Is that what you do? No. There's a procedure. You write a check. You take the check to the counter. They look at it. You know, the same thing with prayer. Although God loves you want to answer your prayer, there are procedures when it comes to prayer. I, I don't know. Does anybody... So, so let, let's do this. Bring the checkbook. Let, let's see what this looks like. So this is a checkbook. Does anybody work in the bank and your work is checking all this? You pay on the counter. You, you know about that. You've done it before. Anybody here? Come on, there's going to be somebody that does that in this church. Or else someone is lying right now. Praise the Lord. Anybody? My sister, you come. Yeah, come. Will, will you come? Thank you for being so kind. Yeah. Where's it? Awesome. This is really good. So, you know, maybe you should stay on this side so that he has to come to the counter, you know. So this guy has been given this check by a billionaire, by a billionaire. And, you know, he, he, she needs a microphone. Can I get a microphone for her? Can I get a microphone? She's been given this check by a billionaire because this is how prayer works. Because many people's prayer are bouncing, like checks are bounced. But why are checks bounced? Let's do it. So, she, he comes to the bank, and when he comes to the bank, presents the check to, what's your name, ma? You can, is the microphone Catherine. on? Catherine. Catherine. So, when you give them the check, give her the check. Will you pay this check? Be but there's money in the account. I can tell you authority. So, I'm there. I've checked the back end. There's 10 billion in the account. Will you pay this check? Well, I'll, first of all, I'll go through it. Yes. Check the account and see if it's um, funded. funded. No, I've told you it's funded. There's yeah. 10 billion in the account. But the way the check is now, does it mean the criteria for you to pay it? No. No. Why will you reject this check? Because there's no money inside? No. Why will no. you reject the check? The date is not written. Oh, the date. So, so the first thing that you said, sir, please go back and write the date. And the man can be so angry and say that, I have money in this account. Why should I go back and write the date? It's not about having money in the account. The way the checking system works, you must have date on your check. So it goes back to write the date. Go back and write the date. Because go back and write the date. Because, because see, see, let me say something. When we pray and the prayer bounces, we are quick to say God is not faithful. We are quick to say God is not kind. We are quick to say God is not answering prayers. What did I, but, but when your check bounces in the bank and you have money inside, you didn't say your bank is responsible. You ask the teller, what is wrong with my check? 
He said, there's no date. What do I do? I go back and put some date on it. So, it puts some date on it. You bring it back. So, with the way it is right now, will you pay to look at it again? Okay. Will you pay it? Are you sure? Look at it again because I've, there's something you should see there. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I won't. You won't pay it again? Yes. It's no, not no, no, no. It's not true to the account. It, it's not a secret. But, but yeah. do you notice also, you know, but, but I want to see, I, there's something I want to see. Look at the words and look at the figures. Oh, yeah, that's true. The, the, <laughs> the, the, the words and the figure are two different things. What, what does the words and what does the figure say? The word is um, 5 million naira and the figure, um, 5 million, and the figure is 500,000. So it's not. So you can't pay. So you take the check again, give it back to him. And he can say, you know, I need to pay. But the thing is that once you don't write the check well, you cannot be paid. And that's why I tell you, the act of praying effectively must be lent. You can't just say, Father, I sweated. I know you have answered Because, because the question today is this. Look at it. Is this there? The, the guy wrote 5 million in words and wrote 500,000 in figures. And so the check is bouncing. Question, thank you very much. Thank you. You can give it to him. Woo! Question this morning. Do you know why your prayer is being bounced? And the reason I'm saying so is that a lot of Christians don't pray again. A lot of Christians don't even have faith that God answers prayers. And the reason why is that because their prayer has been bounced so many times and it's for them to know why their prayer is being bounced and fix it. So look at that guy. The guy can go out and not fix it. But every time he comes back, he's going to have an issue except he understands what is happening to my prayers. So today, we want to learn. We're learning four laws of prayer. We learned one last week. I hope I can throw three more in today that will make your prayer, that will move you from someone that is just praying to someone that has praise and see results. Let's look at James chapter 5, verse 16. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. hallelujah. And you know it's not good to experience bounce prayer. Have you experienced bounce prayer before? I just wonder, God, why? One lady told me, say, he said, I told God, why are you embarrassing me in front of people? He said, I prayed about this. I came in faith. I told them there will be a change. He said, I told them. He said, they were laughing. Now they are laughing at my God. I said, no. I said, both them and God are laughing at you. And the reason why is the principles when it gets prayer. See what the Bible says. James chapter 5. James, James is one of the people you need to know that prays a lot among the apostles. So James begins to tell about prayer. It says, confess your fault one to another. Pray for one another that you may be healed. Then the next thing what? It says what? The effectual what? Fervent what? It says the effectual fervent prayer of what? Of what? A righteous. I want to start with a righteous man. Because... Because most of us do not understand what we pray based on righteousness. How do we pray? I want to show you how we pray. Let's read in the Bible. Luke chapter 18, verse 9. This is how we pray. Luke chapter 18, verse 9. Not now. Luke chapter 18, verse 9. The Bible says, And he spoke, Jesus Christ spoke a parable to a certain to certain that trusted. He said, these are the people that trust in themselves, that they were righteous. They, they trust that they are righteous and they despise others. He said, two men went into the temple to pray and one was a Pharisee, a godly man, and the other was a publican. And the Pharisee stood and prayed and said thus, God, God, I thank thee that I'm not as the other men as extortioners. I thank you I don't take bribe, I don't steal, I'm not unjust, I don't sleep around. I'm not an adulterer or even as the other guy prayed. Look at that other guy with tattoo. I'm not even, I don't even have tattoo. You know, so they begin to, in, in their own system, they are ranking themselves before God. He said, not only don't I do that, see that the things, he said, these are my spiritual qualifications. I fast twice. Most of them even fast weekly. He said, I fast twice this week. And I give tithe of all. He didn't say I give tithe of my income. He says, I look at the old thing I have. I give tithe of everything I possess. That's tithe on another level. <laughs> and the Bible says, when he said that, there was a publican. The publican means a sinner. Standing afar off. He said, I can't even come close. Standing afar off. And will not even lift up his eyes. He says, Lord, Lord I, I'm not even sure I can, I can lift up my eyes. And smote his chest. He said, God... Be merciful to me. I am a sinner. 
And Jesus Christ said in the next verse, God will answer the godly man. Is that what he said? Yes or no? No. He said, I tell you, this man that said I was a sinner went to his house justified than the other. For everyone that exalts himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. You know how we pray? This is exactly... See, when you want to pray, you don't pray based on your righteousness. You pray, you pray, you pray based on His righteousness. What's the difference? I want to show you. This is how I hear church people pray. Father, what's going on? I'm 38. I'm a virgin. I'm a virgin. My friends that were sleeping around in school, they all are... They all have husbands. Is it me? I chose not to sleep around. Even she, Nene, I knew she had bought her four times because she confided in me. She has, she's now married with two children. Me, that I'm a virgin, I kept myself. You're praying as if your virginity is an addition to your prayer. Because you're saying that, Lord, reward me because I'm a virgin. Your answer prayer is a work of Christ, not because of our works. This is also how we pray. Father, I've been praying for that promotion. Every Sunday I go to church. I tithe, I tithe. Every month I tithe. And the promotion list came out. And my name is not there. Why? It's me. I do a lot. God, I do a lot for you. I do a lot for you. Do, and God is saying that you are still making a mistake. You are still praying based on what? On yourself. This is what you don't know. For every 10 things you do right, there are 100 sins you commit. So if, if you are talking of works, which one should God judge? You are saying that you're a virgin, but what about the time that you were thinking immoral thought? Is that not a sin? All about the time you almost got to Jerusalem sexually, but you now came back. Because all of a sudden now, in prayer, you behave like you behave like a saint. I'm a virgin. I'm a virgin. I'm a virgin, Lord. <laughs> Father, I tithe all the time. Are you sure it's all the time? <laughs> Jesus Christ said, the way you're going to ruin your prayers is to base your prayer upon yourself. That's why I told us to pray. So when you pray, pray in my name. What does that mean? Pray based on my righteousness. What is praying based on my righteousness? That's why in NLP, you hear me pray. I say, based on the finished work of Christ. It's not because I'm a pastor. It's not because I, I say, don't look at me, Lord. Look at the finished work. You know why? Jesus is the person that prays and God always answers. And that's who we are in him. Jesus Christ said in John 11, he, what did he say in John 11? He said, he said, my, he said it, it, this is what he says. He said, my father always hears my prayers. What do you pray on? Father, I, and I'm a worker. I, I'm a worker in church. You know. You know I'm a worker in church. And Jesus Christ said, well, when you serve in church, what about the other time you meet? The, re the reason why, see, why praying based on works is not a good idea is that nobody's perfect. So, as soon as you bring works, you will fail somewhere. As soon as you bring works, you will fail somewhere. As soon as you bring works, you will fail somewhere. So, the best thing is to pray on the perfect person, Jesus Christ, that is offering and sacrifice is perfect forever. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. So when I go to the place of prayer, I'm not saying I'm coming. I say Father in the name of Jesus. When I say Father in the name of Jesus, I'm saying based on Christ's righteousness. Based on what he has done on Calvary. Based on his death, his burial, his ascension. That's why I'm praying. It's not about me. And most people don't know how to pray like that. Because they've taught us, Father, see my tears. Uh, some people have more tears though. They have more tears. Or based on what Christ has done. It's so, it's so deep. And listen to me, there's a song we sing, Christ is enough. Answer prayers, Christ is enough. I'm praying for my kids based on what Christ has done. I will not say, have labored and labored and labored by this student. Won't you see my effort? Other people have labored more. Based on what Christ has done. On this contract, ah, with all I've done, based on what Christ has done. And you know what that does to me? I learned to rest in His grace. Yes, 
Somebody say hallelujah. Lift up your two hands and say thank you, Jesus. So one of the ways we pray is by resting on his righteousness. He's by resting on his righteousness. He said, the faith of our prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available. Righteousness. And the Bible says in 2 Corinthians that righteousness is a gift in Christ Jesus. The second thing I want to teach about prayer is this. It's a lot specific outcome. Mark chapter 11, verse 23. Mark chapter 11, verse 23. Let's jump to verse, um, Mark chapter 11, verse 23. Let's maybe read from verse 24. That will make it faster for us. Jesus Christ said, Therefore I say unto you, that what things soever you desire. He says, what do you desire? See, the thing is that the more, the, see, the more specific your prayer is, the more dynamic it becomes. What is it? He said, what things you desire. People say things like, um, Father, I wanted to bless me financially. So someone gives you 10,000 and you don't know that God has answered your prayers. Someone says, how can 10,000 be blessed? But you ask that Lord bless me financially. 10,000 is a blessing financially. If you wanted 1 million, why did you ask for 1 million? You know why people don't ask for such things? Because asking such things is what is an expression of faith. So people don't want to be that way. People don't want to get specific because they are afraid they'll get disappointed. People don't get specific in prayer because they are afraid they will get what? Disappointed. So, you're looking for business funding, Father? Some of you, I see the prayer request you sent. I hope you sent your prayer request. We're going to pray about it. It's, a, it's also, Father, please, on this, on this what they call it, uh, um, I want you to just bless me. What does bless me you mean? Bless you could mean God gives you good health. It's a blessing. So, those who are not blessed, you have good health. He has blessed you already. Why do you want something and why are you not specific? This is what I tell couples when I talk to couples. Listen to me. If there's a gift you want on your birthday and your partner is saying that, tell me what you want. And he says, surprise me. Listen to me. Tell your partner what you want. Oh. The reason why is that if you don't tell him what you want, whatever you see as what is surprise. <laughs> I don't know why Bata is very excited. <laughs> Glory to God. It surprise me. Surprise what? Because what you think of surprise might not be what you think of surprise. Because human beings don't know. Some of you, you say, Lord, bless me. Even the angels are confused what you're talking about. Why is it good to be specific in prayer? Number one, it helps you focus. Number two, it gives you an imaging that helps recognition. Some of you cannot recognize your blessing because in your mind, there's no, there's no exact image there. Where are my paintings? Can you bring the paintings? Yeah, bring the paintings for me. Some of you need to bring one at a time, yeah. Will you please hurry so we can close? Thank you. Yeah. Exactly, that way. No, 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 no. You, you, you have it the right way. Just like this. This way. This way, sir. Look at this painting. If, if this is what I'm praying to God for, who knows this is very difficult to build? Because I'm not even sure what it is. I, I know it's kind of houses. I'm not sure if it's a road. I'm not sure if it's an estate. But I, can, I kind of have some imagination of what it is. If the angels want to bring to pass this, they have to be creative. But if you say, this is what I want, this is a clear picture. In fact, below it is a dimension. The question is, what do you want? Why are you asking? Why are you giving angels blurry instructions like this? This is how you're praying about your final. So the angels go to, so Michael asks Gabriel, what do you think he wants exactly? He say, I'm not sure. You know, because the thing looks like village house. But is it village house he wants? But it lives in Lagos. You know, but I don't know. This one, is it Bituka or what does he want here? But, but the reason why is that you're not sure what you want. And he says, whatsoever you desire. So, once your desire is not clear, your answer will not be clear. Are you here? Once your desire is not clear, your answer will not be clear. He said, whatsoever you want. But look at this desire. The image is clear. The dimensions are here. I'm, I'm not just praying for a husband. I'm praying for a man that will treat me right. That will love my children. 
that will stay to the end of days. Because I can pray for a guy, the guy comes up and walks away. Listen, a, a lot of people say, I'm praying for pregnancy. Listen, you don't want pregnancy, what you want is a baby. You know why? A lot of people will get pregnant and, and have miscarriage. But they'll say, God is not faithful. You want a pregnancy, you got pregnant for three months. That was faithfulness. God, you actually got pregnant. That was three months, but it's been three times right now. What you want is not pregnancy, what you want is a child. So I begin to pray for a child. Don't say, I want a man. You can have a man for two months. You've had a man. Didn't you want a man? He came for two months. Didn't you have a man? You had a man. Why can't you just say, Father, I want someone that will stay with me, get married to me, to the end of my life. Someone say, Father, bless my children. Your children can do well academically and also do well in Igbology. You know Igbo? <laughs> Science student. Your children can be, he can do well academically and be a scientist at the same time. So, you know, you, you can, you, they'll be combining both. He, he, my God, very well in banking and finance, but he's a science student. He does well in science a lot. Of, ah, he can mix anything. Why not say, Father? This is how just Christ grew. The Bible says, just Christ grew in favor with men, with God. They were listing how we grew in favor. Why not just say, Father, for my children, grant them good health. Help them be specific. Why? The reason why is that most of us don't put a lot of thoughtfulness to our prayers. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I said glory to God. Is it, Father, give me a business. Give you a business. Business is stressing me. Is that not what you prayed for? If you want a business that will not stress you, why not put in your prayer? Whatsoever you desire, whatsoever you... Don't pray in a way that the angels have to be guessing. Pray in a way that... And you know the thing... Once you pray in a specific way, once your prayer shows up, you not answer as shown. Because the image is real in your heart. The image is real in your heart. The image is real in your heart. One of the things about specific outcome is that the image is real in your heart. The image is real in your heart. So it shows up. But when the image is not real, you're not even sure what you're praying for. And you know the thing? In the realm of the spirit, there are... In the realm of the spirit, it's not words that you see. It's pictures are communicated. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, if you pray and you don't have a clear picture, the image will be very blurry. And it can't be effective. Thank you, sir. Are you getting blessed? Yes, sir. Are you getting blessed? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Why do some prayers take time? This is why it takes time. Because some people, when they are praying, they put time in their prayer. They say, Father, do this. But their mind, you know, when you pray, things don't happen very fast. I hope you know that that's a demonic theology. You see, everything with God is very slow. Not my Jehovah. God is slow. Satan is not like God. Who, who gave this Satan speed? Who, who, ah, who gave him brush to brush? How can Satan have more speed than God? It's in our mind. It, it's somewhere. And that's why a lot of Christians have slow answers to their prayer. Because in their mind, there's a fundamental thinking that God is slow. And because you think that way, as a man thinketh in his will happen, so is it. And you receive what you believe. My God is fast. Thank you. My God is fast. Sharp, sharp God. Do it quick, God. My God is fast. If your God is slow, I wish you all the best. My God is fast. Quick and active. Hallelujah. My God is fast. The more, see, you will not change your mind in one day, but the more you start thinking that way, your mind will start changing. When you pray for something right now, expect a text. Some of you don't even, some of you when I pray, God will not take time. You know, it's almost as if God did not know what you want until you prayed. Is that the one you read in your Bible? It says, before you call, I have answered. While you were yet speaking. While you were yet speaking, I, heard. I have heard. Hey. It's not your prayer that informed God of your need. Your prayer gave him the access to do what he wants to do. Yes, Glory to God. Thank you, sir. Are you here, somebody? Are you here, somebody? The last thing. So we said number one, righteousness. Number two, specific. The third thing is this. The prayer must be heartfelt. What is heartfelt prayer? There are two ways to pray. You can pray from your mouth or from your heart. Do you, do you know that there are two ways to say I love you? I love you. That's from here. But it's look into my eyes. 
and, and your eyes begin to grow dim. Baby. I, I just want to let you know I love you. What's the difference? One is heartfelt. One is mouthful. How do you pray? Do you pray from inside or from the mouth? Look at James chapter 5 verse 16. We're going to close from here. James chapter 5 verse 16. James 5 verse 16. Look at this. Confess, let's, let's do the King James, let's do the Amplified Version right now. Let's do the Amplified Version right now. It's a confess your faults one to another, your sleeps, your false steps, and your offense, and pray for one another that you may be healed, restored to a spiritual tone of mind. Then he said the earnest. But because earnest is an old word, he said, let's explain it in modern English. He said the heartfelt. What is heartfelt? A heartfelt prayer. It's a prayer that comes from inside. It's true that it's your mouth that vocalizes it. But it's not a prayer from the tongue. The prayer is born from the deeper dimensions of the spirit. The prayer is born from the deeper regions from within. That is a heartfelt prayer. Some people say, why do we shout in prayer? We don't intend to shout. Nobody says, hey, let me shout it. No, we don't intend to shout. It's like when some people are watching football and they knock up the stool or knock up the TV because out of the excitement of the goal, nobody thinks of watching football and thinks of knocking the stool. Nobody thinks of that. But when there's a goal, the guy just goes, hey, he doesn't know when his feet goes on the floor and knocks up the stool. The same thing with the heart for prayer. We, we, we thought it was a simple prayer. But as we gather together, and we began to pray for the child. We began to pray for things. The prayer got a hold of our emotions. The prayer got all of us. Yeah! 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 What is yeah? It's the sounds of the spirits. It's the sound from the inside. Something has happened on the inside. That we, we are traveling something. People think we make it up. You, you don't understand the thing. We, you don't make it up. When you're drunk, you're drunk. You don't make up drunkenness. When you have pain, you have pain. You don't make up pain. Ah! This kind of prayer, our heart is burning. The doctor has said, he said, except she, except there's a miracle, she can never have a child. And we said, never. Not this sister. She's one of us. As we began to pray, ah, you know, we, 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 it was going to be a simple prayer. But, but we began to pray from inside. And as we prayed, heartfelt prayer, the, the heart took over our emotions. He just, ah, yeah. What is that? The spirit is taking over. There are people that pray from their mouth. Uh, <laughs> their prayer is in big English. To the incredible, majestic, and everlasting Father. See, let me tell you, the power of prayer is not in words. It's from where it's coming from. The power of prayer is not in words. It's where it's coming from. The power of prayer is not in words. It's where it's coming from. The prayer, no, it's heartfelt prayer. Heartfelt prayer. When we pray this kind of prayer, what is you? You remove you. <laughs> What is you? <laughs> ah, what is you? This is not the prayer you pray. It's a, a, a father, you know, out of my mind. You know, <laughs> no. This kind of prayer, every hindrance is stripped off. Why? It's like Jacob and God. He will stay there. There's something I want to see. Some guy watching prayer, watching television, and your phone is on. You are checking Instagram. You are not serious. <laughs> you may get it, get it, get it. Um, okay. I'm not available. Text me, I'm praying. Uh-uh, that's not our prayer. <laughs> that's not our prayer. <laughs> that, 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 that's another kind of prayer. This kind of prayer is hot. It's from within. When we say, Father, in the name of Jesus, the whole of heaven and earth shakes because it's from within. It's burning in our soul. It's burning our spirit. It's burning everywhere. There's a spirit takeover. His heartfelt prayer. It's heartfelt prayer. This is not a prayer. Everybody, no, 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 no. He's not mad. You can pray from the mouth. But that's all I'm talking about. This prayer bounces from inside. Ah! You don't even know when the time flies. All of a sudden, your senses are stirred up. All of a sudden, your spirit is stirred. All of a sudden, you, you will find yourself so overwhelmed by the Spirit of God. Why? You have not yielded to the Spirit of prayer. Are you here? Are you here? Are you here? 
They begin to challenge you at work. They say, as long as I'm here, you'll not get promoted. So I say, hey, you will see my, you will see my God. You are talking too much. People that will see their talk, don't tell other people. Go home. When they see your God, they will ask you to come. You will go home. Hey, man, no, 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 no. Father, it's me. I'm, I'm not looking for trouble. But they are troubling Israel. I'm at Father, it's a very simple prayer. You will say, Father, I'm not the one looking for trouble. They are the one that chose to trouble Israel. What is the prayer? I step aside, Father, step in. On this promotion matter, I step aside, my father step in. Hey, hey, hey. On this pregnancy matter, I step aside, father step in. On this job matter, I step aside, father step in. On this healing matter, I step aside, father step in. On this approval, I step aside, father step in. As you begin to pray that way, the painful kama shabalama. The power of the Holy Ghost is to come all over you. It will come all over you. It will come all over you. And there will be a way. I said there will be a way. I said there will be a way. Ragado Shabalada. This is not the kind of prayer that is from here. He's from here. He's not the kind of uh, you don't want to speak phonetics. Uh-uh. Ah. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Not this kind of prayer. When <laughs> listen, every year. Anna will come to Shiloh. He will be praying from the mouth. I said, Father, I don't have a child. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. Ah, talking too much. The day she prayed heartfelt prayer, the words in her heart were more than a mouth could contain. Eli looked at her and said, Woman, you're drunk. He said, Yes, but not drunk with problem. My heart is full. My mouth is talk. As my heart is talking, my mouth cannot catch up. Ah, Eli said, I know that prayer. Eli said, I've been there. He said, may God grant you your petition. Ah, uh, and I said, that's what I was waiting for. Apataya. And as she stepped out, she got pregnant. That's heartfelt prayer. That's the prayer you need as a Jewish pastor. That's the prayer you need as a father. Not that every time in the family, you say, woman pray. No! Ah, what's woman pray? Men are carriers of divine presence. You should lead your, you should lead your family in the altar. Not leave it to your wife. Is your wife always waking up to pray. You are the man. You are the priest of the home. Carry the presence there. Lay hands on the children. Drive out devils. I remember when our son, second son was growing, my wife brought to my attention. He said, do you notice that our second son, he has like a speech problem? I said, not my own child. I did behave as if I didn't hear, but I heard at night. I just went to him. He was even sleeping. Rabba, I command you to be healed. Not here, you'll be having speech problem. We didn't even realize when it disappeared. Heartfelt prayer. They want to take your contract. You are praying. Oh, Father, you know what? This is really paining me. But um, let me call John first. You know, <laughs> um, <laughs> ah, is that what you're saying? Ah, uh-uh, not that kind of prayer. They want to take your job. Ah, lift up your head so you get. They lifted up. They say, as long as you are here, you'll not get the contract. He says, okay. You've drawn the battle line. As long as you're not get mine, it's okay. Lift up your head so you get. Be lifted up your everlasting doors. Let the king of glory come in. Where is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty battle. Yeah, 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 yeah. For he is the king of glory. Somebody shout amen. Stand on your feet, let us pray. Stand on your feet, let us pray. As we conclude the fast this week. Lift up your head so you can't. Be lifted up the everlasting doors. I don't know what gets this to be lifted. I don't know what doors is to be lifted. It's time for heartfelt prayer. All of you in the extension. All of you watching online. It's time for heartfelt prayer. 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 Hey, Sune, you have one more minute to pray. You have one more minute to pray. You have one more minute to pray. Heartfelt prayer. Heartfelt prayer. Heartfelt prayer. Heartfelt prayer. Heartfelt prayer. Heartfelt prayer. Yada makubada. Bengusa balabayada. Sile getenemaya. 
I must see those things. I must hear those things. Have your prayer. The family condition must change. The ministry must go forward. The cell must expand. The members must align. The department must go forward. In a Ruskita, Lake Makuta, Shamina Korate, Barade, Rabaka, in the extension, let me hear your prayer. Yeah, Shilegele, Legele, Lompeketo, Sabarama, Tabarada. Where are the mothers praying for their children? Where are mothers at travail? Where are fathers are carrying their print, their priesthood for their family? Let me hear you pray. Yapa Shane Kopata, Hostike, Nananananana, Esepataya. Where are those that carry the body for Nigeria? Let's deliver Nigeria from the hands of political corruption. Sama Kapataya, Silege Lege Lege Le, Sabina Umpatani Gabarada, Yasibarada, Yabina, Yabina, Kona Nade Brada, Shabala Gaba, Umpelos Keha, Evan Tonobani, Ambila Ga, Shalema Robodo, Empeton Rombanike, Opali Gede Gede. Opeledusa, sile, 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 sade, sile, sade, sadaya, kateata, apakona, inena, andonato, embagadua, sabadea, shataga, kenti mosegos, opete nebere. Oh, hey, 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 hey. In Jesus' name. Listen to me. When you get home, pray some more. When you get home, do what? I didn't hear. When you get home, do what? Tomorrow morning, you don't need an alarm. Alarm your body. 6 30 a.m. We are praying. We are decreeing. We are establishing things. We are putting what should be uprooted. Lift up your hands as I pray for you. The anointing is dead. In the name of Jesus, from this moment, the glory and the beauty of God will be seen in your life. I say from this moment, the glory and the beauty of God will be seen in your life. You have now become a reference of answer prayers. I say you have now become the reference of answer prayers. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Shout amen. Shout I receive it. Praise God. God bless you can have your seat.